Or is the Maven Mega Match this final this weekend? Uh, I qualified back in April now, ages ago. Decoy Lakes. Um, I remember then thinking it's a long time till the match, and uh, it, but I'm sure it'll come around quickly. And it has been unbelievably busy summer. With those of you who watch the vlog will know. So really, I was I was uh, really looking forward to it, but I hadn't had a chance to get too excited about it. If you see what I mean. So what I managed to do was get in a couple of days' practice on the uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, the week before the match. Now. Practicing is a funny old thing for big matches because really you can't really learn too much about the venue in practice because uh, you're pleasure fishing, there's no nets in the water, the pressure on the water is not the same. Uh, it's different when you go practicing for say a natural venue where there'll be several people practicing in a line or something like that but on a lake it makes a massive massive difference uh, when you go sit two or three of you fish that you don't often see caught come into the play, you know, and you catch lots of them. So, you know, for example, big carp or big perch or bream or anything like that. So you've got to be a little bit open-minded. But what practice does allow you to do is hone your tackle and make sure everything that you're doing is, you know, within uh, right. You've got a lot of confidence in your hooks. You've got a confidence in your hook baits. You've got confidence in your elastics. You've got confidence in your line your pole, where to fish, you can still dictate better places and, and not. So that was really what I was just looking to do. I took um, Matt Godfrey with me, he's a very, very good friend of mine and uh, one, of the, one of the best anglers in the UK and I think that having someone like that there with me was a great help because obviously when he's fishing, uh, we're talking all the time, we're discussing the tactics and things like that. So. Um, you know, Matt wasn't in the final and he was going to sit with me on the day of the match, so it was important to me that he came with me and, and saw what was going on. So that was quite good. Um, the day of the match, I drew peg 9, which is about permanent peg 22 on Larford. It's just before the uh, the island on the match lake. It's just before that peg. And for those, Again, those of you that watch the blog, uh, it's where Andy Geldart drew back in uh, Fishermania qualifier, which he qualified and then subsequently won Fishermania. So I was quite excited. I thought that's a relatively good area. It massively depends on what the wind's doing. Um, for example, I remember when Andy drew there, there was a quite a, a very, well, very, very strong wind, and the island was a little bit of shelter from that wind. and. You know, he said to me he felt that I held a few extra fish. Well, when we went on the match, the wind wasn't particularly strong. Um, and it wasn't quite in the same direction. So what it actually created was behind the island, there was a bit of a sort of a calm area where the water was quite still. Now, in the summer on commercials, having a bit of a ripple on the water makes a massive difference. And I think that when I sort of sat on my peg and didn't see any ripple, I was a little bit disappointed because I felt that the fish probably wouldn't be as prone to feeding, but there was quite a bit of a ripple of movement on the pole, so I wasn't too despondent about that. Um, my plan was to start on the pole. There's a lot of pressure on the bank, so I started on the pole with pellets. Um, I found in practice that pellets were the best bait, um, generally on all lines. I've got a lot of confidence in pellets. I felt last time I fished the match, I had way too many baits on my side tray, so I just had some ground bait and dead maggots and uh, worms for fishing down the edge, either maggots or worms on the hook. Um, and then I had some 6mm pellets for these pellet lines on the pole and some micros done up for the method feeder and a few 8mm pellets for feeding. Relatively simple bait tray there. Um, keep things clear in my mind, I was very confident and everything was quite organised and I felt really ready for the match. I started about 11 metres, a lot of pressure on the bank, so I didn't want to start too close. Uh, fished a 4 by 14 Jura 6, it was really nice, just dotted right down, potting in a few pellets, reading your bites. Uh, those of you who have been on, sort of anyone who's been on a tuition day or anything like that with me, uh, coaching days or demo days, I always look, I always do that short line because it's a real good example of how to feed and how to tune your approach to sort your short you know, your short line uh, uh, fishing. So, um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, that, 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 was, that was really good to me. I, I was really happy. 
Um, when I started, it was I knew it was going to be hard. A lot of people said it was going to be a good match. I knew it was going to be hard. When we practiced, it was hard. Uh, I knew it was going to be a hard match. So I really didn't beef up with big gear. I was fishing 11 hollow, 011 power line, PR36 hooks, you know, 18s. Uh, small hook, small tackle, but tackle that I trust. And I started with a soft pellet on the hook, and I caught, uh, uh, I think I caught a small carp, uh, and then I caught a couple of skimmers, changed to a hard pellet and caught a slightly bigger carp. Um, Farrell looked a couple of fish, I think that was inevitable really, there was quite a lot of toe on the water. And after about an hour I was sitting alright, Matt Godfrey said to me, look an hour's gone, you're top five in the match for sure. Uh, it's been a terrible start, so you know, keep going. Well, that was great. That was just to my plan. Incidentally, at this point, Chris Cameron on my left had been fishing the pole, and we were probably touch and go. Me and Chris, I, I probably think I had a little bit more than him at that point, and uh, and he's been steadily feeding uh, uh, some eight mil pellets out long, but sort of twos, threes, fours, eight mil pellets. Well, I've I've gone a slightly different route to that. I've been a lot more aggressive. I've fed sort of ten to fifteen pellets. Uh, all the time, quite aggressively. I felt that they weren't naturally going to be feeding where I was in the calmer water. I was going to have to make something happen, and that's what I decided to do with the pellets. Chris went on the method feeder or the bomb. He sort of changed between the two. I'm not too sure. After about an hour, and he caught a couple of carp, uh, and I thought, well, okay, well, I don't really want to go on the method just yet. See if I can catch a bit more. Moved out to 14 and a half meters on the pole and snuck a couple of fish, but again nothing really of any relevance i think a couple of skimmers and it was a poor hour and i was I, I felt a little bit disappointed i felt like maybe i could have gone on the method a bit earlier but i was trying to save it in my mind for that better fishing towards the end well chris forced me hand he had three more carp and every carp that chris had was a big fish and uh you know decent fish between six and ten pounds so i cast the method out quite expectantly i've been feeding regularly you know, I felt I'd managed my peg well up until that point, and uh, I was ever so disappointed because for the next 50 minutes I never had a bite. Um, I chucked on my feed, then I chucked off my feed, past my feed, short my feed, trying to find a fish. I eventually settled back on my feed. Maybe if I'd have chucked on my feed a bit sooner, I could have nicked another couple of fish, but. I don't think it would have made a difference. My, then I, when I did get one, it was a nice fish about. Uh, a mirror around about probably seven or eight pound and then I caught another one about five pound and I thought well this is going all right you know these are you know maybe a few more of these fish and I might stand a chance of doing well you know it, it, even if I'm not going to beat Chris um, and then I, I did catch another three fish but every one was sort of two or three pound quite small carp and like I said but this time even though those five fish that I've had were probably fish for fish with Chris Oh, he had 30 pound more based on the size of the fish. I was fishing either a six or eight mil pellet on the hook. I felt I was feeding eight mil pellets. I felt that was the right hook bait to fish. I know he's fished some sort of bright boilies or an eight mil pellet on the hook. Uh, I haven't done a bright boilie. Maybe that would have made a difference, but I'm not a, I'm not a big believer in, uh, in individual hook baits personally. I like to think that my method is well presented with an eight mil pellet and, and a carp will eat it, but maybe maybe I'm wrong on that, you know, maybe I should look into that more, but that's what match fishing's all about really. Um experimenting a bit. But anyway, sort of Um by this point I know I'm not gonna beat him now, but Chris is having a a, a, a difficult last hour really and, and so am I. I mean at this point now the wind's gone completely for both of our pegs. And he's really struggling and I think that to me showed what the fish want. He has caught one carp on his pole line with a method feeder and one big carp down the edge but um, at the end. But in relation to what he already had, I mean, at the end of the match, he's won the match fantastically with 43 kilos and Perry Stone's been second with 37. But I would have thought if we'd have weighed in with an hour to go, Chris would have had 35 and Perry wouldn't have even had 20, maybe 15 kilos at best because he's caught big fish down the edge late. So you can see that the fish had moved from the area and I just feel that that was a little bit of a reflection to what had happened to me throughout most of the day. 
Uh, I ended up weighing 16 kilos. Jamie Hughes got our section by default, fished a nice tidy match on the pole all day. He's an excellent angler. Um, that wasn't really what I was going to do when well, I'm sat next to the, the man who's winning the match. So I felt that, you know, fishing it in a similar way, which was already my plan, was what I had to do. And, and two or three more bites and, and I would have done well, you know, if that had been some bigger fish, but it wasn't to, have, wasn't to be. But, you know, I enjoyed the whole experience. Uh, There's a lot to learn. I must admit, I mean, to weigh 16 kilos on a commercial at the end of August was disappointing. Um, I certainly, I would have beaten, I would have been about halfway in the match with that, you know. Um, uh, so I certainly wasn't, you know, well down, but um, the other side of the lake was was generally a lot better. Down by the rope there was a few fish, and up by the island there was a few fish, and then there was just a few of us scattered around that couldn't catch anything. So a little bit disappointing that it wasn't a little bit better, but hats off to Maver and Phil Briscoe. Uh, ben Hughes, who does a lot of the organisation, what a fantastic event that was. Uh, the night before was a great event, and uh, really everything was really impressive. So um, you know, I was I was just proud to be a part of it, and it was a really really good match. A little bit deflated, probably you can tell for those of you who watch regularly. I'm, you know, I've had a fantastic summer. I really have. I, you know, I had a, one or two iffy matches but on the whole generally I've had some some really great results so I, I must admit I was disappointed for it for nothing really to happen I did fish the incidentally I fished the team match the next day at Larford Lakes and uh, I drew two or three pegs to the right of where I was the day before and weighed nearly exactly the same weight and some what I consider fantastic anglers were to my right and that, and they caught absolutely nothing uh, you know, six kilos, um, you know, eight kilos. You just get an idea of how few fish there were feeding in the area. And then again, in similar areas to the day before, Far Bank, Odd Feature Peg, they caught some fish. So, you know, for whatever reason, I mean, I have looked at the results from this weekend. It doesn't appear that the commercials have fished as well as they normally do, but for whatever reason, um, it's not gone for me. It's not. I mean, the team did well, actually. We did do well. There was 22 teams. We were fifth. I know Barnes were on a bit of a winning run, but you know, I, I felt that that really you need a good set of pegs. We were a little bit unlucky to be beaten here and there by a pound or two. Maybe could have snuck, snuck in third, but you know, uh, Team Matrix won. Fair play to them. Great set of blokes and uh, really, really good result for them. So a good weekend at Larford, really. Um, in terms of like the organisation and the big matches, but the fishing could have been a little bit better. Now, uh, what I am going to do is I promised a, a bit of a mention for a, for a young lad who emailed me this uh, this week, Adam Biggerdike. Fantastic result he's had. He's had uh, some really nice rud and uh, a really cracking carp, and he's won his junior match. It was a hard match, but he's had seven pound with those rud and that carp peg one, and that was at. I can't remember all these things. Hollywell Row. So congratulations, Adam. Fantastic result this weekend for you. And uh, if anybody else, uh, you know, we've got some young anglers, love to give them a mention. Get your emails in and we'll see if we can give you a mention on the blog. Anyway, that's the blog this week. Um, I hope you tune in next week. I've got, uh, I think I've got a bit of a, a steady week this week because I'm um, going out to help England with the World Championship. So nothing really too massive happening. Uh, <laughs> So uh, I quite look forward to going out and taking part in that. I'll catch you, uh, I'll probably get, try and get you a blog so you can see what's going on at the World Champs. See you later, bye.